I'm Duncan Hunter. And I'm Duncan Hunter. And this is the Duncan Hunter Show. And we're here today with Thomas Joseph Irwin. Oh, you got my real name. You may have heard of Shotgun Tom Kelly. That's me. I would love to hear about how you went from Thomas Joseph Irwin to Shotgun Tom Kelly during this podcast. But you hit your peak in the 80s. Both of you did. Dad in Congress, nice. yeah. Shotgun Tom in San Diego, and in, in California in doing radio. So I want you guys to talk about the good old days, oh, the yeah. ones you, you ruined and took away, and now we have my generation and, and younger. So please. Well, what is this? Presentation of the relics? Yeah. Yes, <laughs> it is. <laughs> Dinosaur days at the Hunter yeah. House. Show me oh, your flip yeah. phones. Hey, let me tell you, the guy sitting next to me <laughs> is the legend. He's the legend, the man. He's the voice that has brought happiness and, and uh, joy to millions of listeners in his wonderful career. And, you know, and he got this picture that, that where he got his, his uh, star. He got his star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. Yep. I want to hear how you did that. That was uh, difficult. Did, did, you, did you pour that concrete at no, night early in the morning? They don't just give those out. And I don't think they like giving them out to radio guys, you know even though there's several radio guys that have them, you know, Gary Owens, Robert W. Morgan, real Don Steele. Uh, I've never Rick, heard of any except Rick, you get it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, then there's Rick Dees and uh, Ryan Seacrest. You know, we all have stars. Ryan well, Seacrest I have heard of. Rick yeah. Dees I've heard of. Before yeah. that was probably before me. Right, right, yeah. right, right. Arthur Godfrey. Yeah. <laughs> I got him. Got him. I got him. <laughs> Arthur Godfrey had a house, a stone house, when my dad went back to Washington in 1952 to save America as a volunteer for the Republican Party. Right. We had a farmhouse out in Leesburg, Virginia, 50 miles out of D.C. Arthur Godfrey had an old stone house across the dirt road from us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's why I first heard about Arthur Godfrey. Oh, we, yeah, so when was he a radio star? Uh, New York. He was a, a New York guy. Okay. And uh, he was on the, uh, he was probably one of the first uh, CBS radio network stars for radio, you know, because uh, they had a lot of, uh, at Columbia Square in Hollywood, that's where they did the old radio shows. That's way before TV. Wow. You know, they did the, uh, they did, uh, the Gunsmoke there, and uh, Bill Conrad was uh, Matt Dillon. Gunsmoke was a radio show? Was, yes. Oh, yes. Huh. Radio show, and uh, uh, Bill Conrad was Matt Dillon, you know. And uh, they did a lot of shows out of Hollywood. At so you must Square. feel something about, uh, I think it was GMC talking about taking AM radio out of their uh, vehicles coming up. Oh, yeah. That, in fact, in Congress, I believe uh, one of your, one of your uh, cohorts uh, uh -huh. put a bill through. For emergency situations yes. to keep AM radio, which I still love AM radio because I, I like too. to listen to religion <laughs> stuff yep. and uh, you know, sports. And that's mostly on AM. Sure. Yeah. Absolutely. And talk. Yeah. Talks on right. AM. I don't listen to talk anymore. Oh, you're not anymore. No, I've had it. I've had it with talk. This is it. This is my talk. Yeah. Well, speaking about your dad, your dad and I have been friends for years. We visited elementary schools, and we read to the kids. That's when I first met you, Duncan. Remember that? I'll be darned. Yeah. And you know, every every time I remember the hat. Yeah, I know you do. I know. You. And every time I would go to another elementary school, who'd I find there reading a book? Your dad. Duncan. You know. And everybody, if you're listening and not watching, Shotgun Tom Kelly, just Google him. He's got his ever-present hat. Yeah. I would call it a Smokey the Bear hat as yeah, a that's Marine. Yeah, a ranger hat. But yeah. it's a ranger hat. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's, uh, it's been with you everywhere. It has. Even in the White House and even on Ronald Reagan's head. It has. Yes, I gave him. I, I'm that sorry because I'm, I'm... That was your dad. You want to see that? I'm looking at these pictures. You've you got to tell the story, too. Okay, that was your dad's, dad's idea. Uh, he got me the job of emceeing the rally when uh, Reagan came to his favorite town, San Diego. Yeah. His lucky city. I his lucky he city. He so, ended every campaign in San Diego. That's right. Your dad brought up the fact, he says, you know, Shotgun, you ought to give one of your ranger hats to the President of the United States. And he said, I'll arrange it. And so I was working at KUSI TV, doing the KUSI Kids Club at the time. And uh, about a month later, I went out to the front desk and uh, your uh, your audience with the president has been approved, according to Duncan Hunter. Cool. So uh, anyway, uh, I was off to Washington D.C. and uh, I, I got I got out of the uh, cab and and went to the Cannon Building, and you know where that is. Yep. Yeah. My first office was That's in the right. Cannon Building, <clears throat> and your last office. No, were you, he you was were in the, the Cannon Building, or were you yeah. in the Cannon? First, now here's here's office. a funny yeah. story here. You're gonna like this. It's huh. the one I was gonna tell that I haven't told you. See, we didn't rehearse any of this. So they, 
probably don't remember that. It's better that way. It yeah. is better that way. So, uh, and it's truth. When, when, yeah. that, when it, truth comes out at that point, uh, if it's not rehearsed. So anyway, uh, I hadn't had a suit on in a long time. So I walked into your dad's office there in the Cannon building, and I was shaking hands with the staff, and evidently uh, I dropped something on the floor, and I bent over, and the seat of my pants <laughs> opened up. So, you know, your dad is so you cool. You split the seam. I split the seam. <laughs> so, any, your dad is so cool. He said, oh, that's no problem. Uh, so I, 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 I went to the restroom, and I took my pants off, and... Uh, gave it to, to one of your people to sew it up. You, know? uh, you had your staff illegally doing slave labor, yeah. sewing in your office. Yeah, I, I, I don't I'm know telling if, ethics immediately. <laughs> We're a full service operation. <laughs> that is no, so illegal. We serve our constituents. What, yeah, what's the statute right. of limitations? That's what when entered your dad's Eight, all about. 88? So now listen, your dad had to go, your dad had to, go on the, on the, uh, to vote on a bill. So I was waiting for my pants to be uh, uh, sewed up. Hemmed by his staff. So I, I was set. People, Decorated people, by <laughs> staff members, unpaid. People love this story. So I'm sitting there in my underwear in your dad's chair in the office. Now you see that? See, it's that getting chair? worse. At least, you, at least you had underwear on. I did. Okay. Oh, yes. Yes, yes. <laughs> That's great. And uh, my underwear looks like shorts, so it was okay. I always uh, had, uh, you know, needle and uh, thread in my office too, is that because right? we actually lived in our offices. So if you tore something, yeah. So do you have you some have of your it. constituents uh, bust their pants open? Um, no, but I had to fix, <laughs> you know, buttons all the time and that kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, sure, you, sure. You probably did too. Yeah. 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 So anyway. Good. Uh, your dad came back and my, I had my pants on by that time. And so now we're ready to go to the White House, ladies and gentlemen. We go on out and uh, your dad had a beater car. I mean, this car was beat up. I don't know what kind of car it that was. That was my six hundred dollar used retired taxi cab. Is that wow. what that yeah. was? And it advertised uh, ice cold air and roll up windows when I bought yeah. it. How are you proud 600 of this? Six hundred bucks. How are you proud of this? Well, I'll tell you how he's proud of it. You ready? You got hailed on the streets of D.C. by people. They were they <laughs> say, "Hey, cabbie." Well, let me I made you. ten bucks on the way down to the White House. <laughs> well, now dig this. So anyway, uh, we get in his car, and I got to get in the driver's side. Because the passenger door doesn't work. He's got a rope around oh, that's it. What, that's the one we broke when we were uh, hunting. And we backed it up while it was open uh, up against the hillside. Oh, I, I backed it oh, up. Oh, that's it right. Open. Oh, I'm bringing back the memories. Yeah, yeah. Right, yeah. I actually broke that car on a, a little hunting trip. Well, your dad had a rope. As a around. kid. Your dad had a rope just to keep the door closed. That right. was a diesel Buick. And I said, Duncan, yeah. uh, can't you get this door fixed? He said, shotgun. If my constituents can't afford to get their door fixed, I can't afford to get mine. That's what you said. Huh. Well, good. I'm glad, <laughs> I'm glad I said that. You believe in so that. I, I remember that. Yeah. We, we had, uh, Duncan was getting a driving license. We were out hunting mm -hmm. on the eastern shore of Maryland. We slid off the road, and I said, now you're going to learn. I'm going to teach you how to back up to back out of the ditch. Okay. I got out on my side, but I left the door open. So when he backed up, the door caught on the ditch bank, yeah. and I looked back, and the door was peeled back against the engine. Ah, uh, yeah. yeah. So, so we we pulled it back and we bailing wired it or tied it up. So you know but from hey, where I we're speak. We're Republicans. Yeah. We can Im we can improvise. Right? So you know from where I speak now. Yes. There it is. So anyway, we pull up to the White House, and they're a little concerned about this beater <laughs> car. Uh, but uh, then they uh, they your dad showed him his ID. Well, they recognized him because he's been there many times. So anyway, they let us on in. And uh, I remember uh, the president was meeting five people that day, remember? Yeah. He was meeting uh, a congressman, I don't know who, but and a, and a, and a, a senator, and Miss America, and me. You know, that's, that's what it was. Good standing. I guess so. So anyway, I remember... Uh, Oh, the Miss America, I, I remember her name. It was, uh, no, gee, it's, 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 I, it's lost. But anyway, here's the deal. We're now outside the Oval, waiting to see President Reagan. And so the White House guy comes over and says, Duncan, shotgun, the president is ready to see you. So anyway, uh, uh, the door opens, that thick, seamless door in the Oval. We walk in. Mr. Reagan's behind the Resolute desk. He gets up from the Resolute desk and he walks over and uh, 
to the shell bookcase. You know the shell bookcase you've seen? He walks over to that shell bookcase and he knows my name. I'm thrilled. He's been briefed. He said, well, Shotgun, I understand you were the MC and kept the people entertained while they were waiting for me in San Diego. I said, yes, Mr. President, I did. And I bring you this uh, Ranger hat that I, I use in my television and radio career. It's a trademark hat, and I wish you'll put it on. He goes, well, click. There's the, there it there's is. the White House photo. He wears a good Ranger hat. He does, he does. He yeah. does. Now you you arranged the the whole thing, man. Look at you know everybody who sees this photo, they just really enjoy. It. Now uh, on this photo, you you get you get a stamp. Yeah. The Reagan, I mean President Reagan can't sign everything, so the first photo I got a stamp. Okay, so I as you know uh, Michael Reagan and I are good friends. I said, are you going to see? Your, so I they they send you a blank. So I got a blank. I said, uh, are you going to see your dad, uh, Santa Barbara? He said, yeah. Would you take this over and have him actually sign it? So that's actually Mr. Reagan's signature cool. right there. That is now, great. Now, here's, uh, here's the picture, if you recall, of us walking into the Oval Office right there. I've got yeah. the hat in my hand, and there you are, and there's uh, Mr. Reagan, and uh, we're sitting there. Uh, that's our uh, photo shot right there. That's a great one. It is a good Neither one. Of you have huh? oh, Neither yeah. of you have changed. Neither of you have changed. Isn't that amazing? We're just the same. <laughs> the exact same. <laughs> and uh, so anyway, uh, oh, here's the great shot. Here's that the, uh, really cool. uh, your dad got me the, uh, the ability to uh, go up there and be the MC. Yeah, so anyway, that's amazing. That's, up, uh, that's uh, Governor Duke Mason, the president, myself. And uh, Mark Larson. Yeah, now didn't, didn't Duke Mason <laughs> try to stage hook you out of there? Yeah, he said, "Would he, you please sit down?" He kept he kept jostling in there. Yeah, he's, yeah. he's a, you yeah. sit down now. Spoil you know. sport. Huh. So anyway, hey, but now th the president story though, because he yes. when he found out that you had been a sportscaster. Or well, radio not a, I'm never sports, a broadcaster. But yeah. he told about his days on radio. Yes. And he told he said, "I want to tell you the story yes. about when I was calling the baseball game off of tape." Yes, because the radio guy. Was I don't think he said tape in those days. He said, no, no. "He said, well, uh, well, you know, shotgun." There we go. Uh, I used to be in radio too, and uh, I used to recreate the ball games because they couldn't send us announcers along with the team. So we had to stay back at the studio and recreate the games. You probably don't remember that. I said, well, Mr. President, as a matter of fact, I do. On Kogo Radio in my hometown in San Diego, there used to be a couple of gentlemen by the name of Al Shus and Al Coupe. And they used to uh, recreate the Padre games because the Padres couldn't afford to send the announcers along with the team. So I know from where you speak. And so he continued yeah. to tell that story you were about to tell yeah. about how, uh, uh, and, you know, it's a famous Reagan story. Why don't you go ahead and tell it, Duncan? No, I want you to tell Well, it. I don't remember I think it. this well, means that neither of you remember the story. Here's what I remember. Okay. When he said, have you heard the story about when I, I had to announce the game and I did it on a delayed tape. So I'd read the tape and I'd say, and, and Jones, it's a swing and a miss, mm -hmm. right? So he, he did it with about a 10 second delay because yeah. he's reading the tape. Yes. And he said, yeah. and Reagan said, did I tell you about the time when I was, I was given the delayed game on a tape and the tape broke? You said, I think I've heard that story. I said, no, you haven't. Yeah, I know it. <laughs> because, because the staff is standing there growling because yes. they want to get us out of there and they want to get other people in. So here's what he did. He said the tape, the tape broke. The ticker tape. Yeah. The, they didn't the, have real, yeah. real tape. He said, now I, I'm thinking, what am I going to do? So he says, he had Jones foul off the ball like 10 times, and finally when they got the tape fixed, he found out that Jones had actually struck out on three swings. But he told you that story. He told me oh. that, and, and, and you know, the Gipper had a great touch, oh, didn't he? He, didn't was, he have a great touch? He was tremendous, you know, and, and he couldn't have been kinder. I yeah. mean, it was really, it was the end of his day, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, he, uh, I think, you know, I think he was really relaxed because I didn't talk to him about any bills or any legislation. I talked to him about his love, you know, being uh, on radio and television, uh, talking about different microphones that we used. And uh, as a matter of fact, he said, you know, uh, when I was at Paramount Pictures, uh, my makeup artist, his name was Shotgun. And he brought back that memory. And it was just, uh, you know, it was so many great, great memories. And as I said, you're only supposed to have five minutes in the Oval Office. 
We were there, what, 15 minutes now? Oh, yeah. And, yeah. and you were at, they the, were growling at us. The staff was growling. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But, it, but Reagan loved you, and, it, and you know, that's what made, for I think for him, the presidency enjoyable, because he enjoyed people. Yeah. He enjoyed personalities. Yes. And especially a personality like yours, and a guy who's been in the common business with him. That's right. He yeah. likes show business people. And you're pure show business. Well, that's why he felt very comfortable. Yeah. I mean, uh, it was the end of his day. And imagine the president of the United States. What a day that you'd have of, uh, you know, talking to. And, you know, he Congress probably day is no. Is it hard to nap for two or three hours? Wake up, take your pills and your shots and nap again? I don't know. But I mean, just, that's, that's what a, Joe Biden's doing. Oh, is that what he's doing? I'm pretty sure. Yeah. <laughs> well, Lots of napping. He needs a Smokey the Bear hat. Yeah, right? that's we right. Yeah. Get him more. Yeah, yeah. But Reagan probably took his Smokey the Bear hat or Ranger hat back to Santa Barbara, back to the ranch. Yeah. And, well, uh, I know that p the picture of uh, the president myself is up at the Reagan Library. Wow. They have it up That's there. That's great. Wow. I don't, think, I don't know if it's displayed, but they, they yeah. do have it. Shotgun, what started you wearing the hat? Okay, that's good. Uh, good question. Uh, I've, I've never. I'm. I'm curious. Okay, so is a lot of the people. listening audience. You know, are curious. A lot of, they, a lot they've of been people. waiting this entire podcast. Yes, yes. The answer to this. Where question. did he get the hat? Well, see, my mom and dad. Uh, my dad was a railroad engineer on the Santa Fe, and that's another story. Did you want to do that? I story? want to hear that. Yeah. Let's... Okay. You want a hat story first? Whatever you like. Okay. Let's start out with. Uh, my dad was a railroad engineer on the Santa Fe, and he had the uh, the opportunity to bring the President of the United States from Los Angeles to San Diego. So, uh, what he, year? That, that well, cool. uh, I'm going to get to that. Okay. But, you know, in broadcasting, we like to tease you because we don't <laughs> want the audience to go away. We'll, we'll have that year in a moment. So anyway, uh, he, uh, he backed that, tr that presidential car, which is the, uh, uh, the uh, what do they call it? The, anyway, it's the one that, uh, that, that uh, Roosevelt had. It's, and also Truman had it. Wow. And Ronald Reagan used it on one of his. Wow. It's the Ferdinand Magellan. That's what it is. It's on display in um, Miami now at a, at a train place. But anyway, my dad backed it in. He looked, my dad didn't like crowds. He looked out one side of the engine and there were thousands of people waiting to see the president. He looked out the other side and there was nobody. So he got his grip and he got off the engine. And he was making his way to his car as fast as possible. And this man stopped him. Can I tell you what the man said? Yeah. This, the man, this man stopped him and said, You know, I've been with these sons of bitches all day. You're the engineer, aren't you? And my dad said, Yes, Mr. President. I am. <laughs> it was Harry Truman in 1948 coming to San Diego. And the reason he was coming to San Diego is because Clinton McKinnon was running for Congress. Clinton McKinnon. Yes, and Dan, he wanted to support him. Dan and Mike McKinnon from That's right. KUSI, That's right. their dad. Yes. He was a conservative Democrat. That's right. Clinton McKinnon. Yep, yeah, and so, and uh, the, you know, Mike Smith, our producer here, he uh, did the most beautiful video uh, uh, of my train layout. That's my hobby, train layout. And uh, I've got a picture of Clinton McKinnon uh, along with uh, Harry Truman on the uh, on the presidential car wow the ferdinand magellan but uh you know that was uh, so anyway that's how i wanted to meet a president okay. so when when i did your commercial i was doing your commercials for a while yeah yeah and i said hey i want to meet the big guy i said well we got a rally coming up <laughs> and you, that's and, great and i was uh, yeah. well, was one of the mcs yeah for the yeah. rally yeah and uh because so now back to the hat right you want to do yeah. the hat yeah i'm curious i don't want to leave anybody a, a, so the hat, my mom and dad. You've always had it. I mean, and I remember watching you as a kid. Yeah. Um, On the KUSI Kids Club. I, I mean, I was born in 1976, so I was like 10 years old in 86. Oh, you were watching my Channel 10 show. I was watching you, I mean, when I was a kid. Yeah. yeah. You haven't changed a bit, really. Well, that's old. Yeah, I mean, because the hat and the beard. You're too kind. I mean, <laughs> the hat and the beard are iconic and everlasting. You're too kind. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, I was over at Channel 10 to my first kid show called Words of Pop, and it was an educational kid show, and that was syndicated all around America. We'd fly the kids in and, and uh, from different cities, WRTV, KMG, HTV, and their parents, and uh, they would I mean, be on the show. Not to digress, but what, what did you do at Kids of, uh, Words of Poppin'? Words of Poppin'. What was the, what was the centerpiece of that okay, show? Okay, it was an educational game show. They, they wanted to get away from cartoons. And so for we, elementary kids? Uh, for fifth and sixth graders. Fifth and okay. sixth graders, okay. And uh, so uh, we had two teams of players. Okay. Three three people on each team. 
Okay. And our first game was uh, mix a word, which is all scrambled letters. I'd, I'd give them a clue and they'd come up with, with, the, with the answer. That was our first game. Okay. Then our second game was kind of like a, a hangman game. Uh, they, they'd give you one letter and then another letter and uh, then they would guess the word. I would give them uh, a, a clue on what the word was okay. and they'd buzz in on their buzzard. Uh, and by the way, you can see it if you want to go to uh, YouTube and say words a poppin' shotgun Tom hmm. Kelly. There's a whole episode there and I guarantee it's a challenging game. Wow. I'm the host and I was having wow. a problem. So, <laughs> you know, that's what that's what one thing we need today. Yes, yes. We need to make education interesting for kids. Right. Right. And uh, and uh, deliver good, it to them. Good in luck. A way that they... Education's never been interesting. And let me just you have physicists, nuclear physicists, PhD brothers that wasn't interested, especially when they were studying it in the 70s and 80s. That's well, that's not interesting. You have to want to learn, you have to want to expand your mind. You're not going to make math interesting enough for people to want to do it unless the person wants to do it, right? Well, that, yeah. That's just what I think. Listen, they, they've, they've tried so many things now. And when I was in Congress, that's all they tried to do. They tried to whiz bang and neon light all the education stuff. It, it, well, it doesn't but, work. But Shotgun Tom had words of poppin'. I did for We're six good. seasons, six seasons. Yeah. And then the last game that we'd play was uh, find a word. Now, you'd, I'd say, okay, uh, we we're looking for the word cat. And you can't say, they buzz, they get buzz in on their buzzer, and they, you can't spell it with C-A-T, because out of the, uh, the little square, there was a little number, and you had to spell it by the number, not the word. So C-A-T could be four, seven, eight. So Wheel of Fortune, but way harder. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It was a Fun. great show. I won two Emmy Awards for that right. show. Uh, the, the show itself won uh, what they wow. call... A, uh, in fact, Buffalo Bob uh, back in uh, Miami gave us uh, uh, an award for the show. And since it was syndicated across the country, people got to, uh, you know, McGraw-Hill owned the owned And the you show. got to make money off it probably, right? Oh, yes. Quite I a made bit. It, yes. That's great. That was great, yeah. Put a nice huh. downstroke on my house. That's you great. know, but no, that that really made it <laughs> gave, his hat collection expanded. <laughs> yeah, that made, uh, that gave me a uh, uh, an audio visual uh, representation for San Diego, you know. Yep. Uh, you know, uh, Johnny Downs, when I was growing up, that was my guy. Mm -hmm. You know, my dad, Johnny Downs was a railroad engineer. And I remember dad coming home and says, hey, this actor came in and I had to get on my knees and pull the uh, Santa Fe engine in, this was 1958 or something like that. He had to, pull, and Johnny Downs had his, he was acting like he was the engineer. And my dad had to be out of camera shot and so uh, Johnny would get off the engine and walk across into that beautiful depot, and then they would cut to the uh, studio, and Johnny would go, howdy, 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 good to see you, good to see you. And he was just one of the greatest uh, children's show hosts that I'd ever seen. I always try, tried to, uh, try to be like him because he was so great. And uh, he was an actor. He used to be in the Our Game cam uh, comedies, he was Johnny in our game. I'll be darned. And he was a great actor. And he, I, I thought, um, I talked to his daughter, Molly, and uh, I said, it must have been a step down for your dad to come from Hollywood into San Diego to do a kid show. She says, oh no, he wanted to do it. He wanted to come to San Diego. And they lived over in Coronado. And, uh, and so no, it was, um, that was back in 1957, something like that. Fifth and sixth grade, too, I remember that's when kids either you could tell they got really smart mm -hmm. or they didn't. <laughs> right. Yeah. That's when they either take off or, or you don't. That's when you can kind of tell. Now, I, I had friends. I was like, that that dude's a smart guy. He's going to he's, he's going to be really smart. And he turned out to be really smart. That's yeah. when you kind of now, take Duncan, off. you ask. I, I, I keep uh, I keep uh, drifting. But you asked about the hat. The hat. The hat. OK, we're going to get to the hat. You right went now. bald at 12. No. OK. No, no. So the hat. <laughs> Uh, the hat is uh, my mom and dad used to go camping and I used to, uh, you know, uh, be, be friends with the forest rangers because a lot of the forest rangers were teachers and that was their job that they had for three months. And they were just very kind people to this little eight year old kid. So I got myself a hat and I put the block in it. And so that's how I enjoyed the hat. Now, later on in my career, uh, when I was at KCBQ, uh, we all had to come up with a different shtick. 
And so I said, well, I'm going to go down to Christensen's department store in East San Diego, and I'm going to buy me a Ranger hat. And so that's how the Ranger hat started. And uh, When was that? What, what year was that, roughly? That was 1970. Wow. Yeah. And it's been with me ever since. Six years before I was born. Isn't that You've wild? had this hat on. Now, let me tell you, you take something. Take it off in the shower? Uh, oh, absolutely. Okay. <laughs> uh, but I'll tell you what, Duncan. Uh, you probably don't remember this, but your dad took you to work. When I after uh, after we got back from the White House, uh, and uh, you you were in the cr congressional dining room with us. Now your dad was constantly going to work. <laughs> so anyway, uh, your dad said, "Hey, will you uh, will you babysit my son for a while?" I said, "Absolutely." And so he went in to vote, and you and I had the grandest time. That's in, great. In this is the, the best uh, story I've heard about me. Yeah. <laughs> in no, a we long had a time. great time. You were a good kid. Very good. I mean, you were not a problem. You didn't run around and go crazy. You we hear just, this? <laughs> we, had a great, yeah. we had a great time. I didn't like the way you voted, though, over the next two hours. <laughs> right. <laughs> no, it was really Funny. great, talking. And uh, I remember, I, uh, folks, I saw him. He was at the ribbon cutting of the uh, Highway 52. And I saw him there. I said, hey, Duncan, you know, when you were a little kid, I babysat you. And that was... You did. You know, you were, you were surprised. I sat on Secretary's knees, babysat by shotgun Tom Kelly. <laughs> I, I was taken very well, taken care of. Yeah, that was yeah. a fifty-two interchange. You earmarked money for that. Actually, that was one of the last earmarks done for East County before earmarks became illegal. Thank yeah. uh, goodness. Hey, it's a it, should have it, widened it. It's though. a it's a great road. It's, it yeah, is yeah. a fabulous it's road. Slow in the morning. Thank well, you. They got thank you. Three, thank you. Three lanes going to two. Oh, it's great. Well, oh, it's, I mean, it's I, good. If, if I'm going to go to Claremont, I don't have to go around the tip of... See, before 52 happened, we had to go down Mission yep. Gorge Road right. and all the way around. That was, that Through was, the industrial area and everything. Yeah, to me, that was like going around the tip of South America, yeah. you know. Right. Uh, but you created well, the Panama him. Canal Road. No, him. Yeah. I just sat That's there. right, you did. That was the you first did. year I was in Congress. I had the nothing to do with it. The taxpayers did it. We just yeah. assisted. Yeah. Yes. Well, yeah. you know, remember that... Back when taxpayer money could be spent on stuff that they, uh, where they actually lived. Well, I yeah. believe they were fighting you on this because there was a bird that was endangered. Yeah. Is that right? Or a flower? Yeah, there's always a bird that's yeah. endangered. Yeah. <laughs> yeah the, the, I think the Bell's Vario. Yeah. Yeah. That was. A, and on, and on and my the, radio and, show. Uh, I've on, heard on, they taste really good. Oh, is that right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> on my radio show on uh, Sirius. That's where I am now, I, uh, by the way. I'm on Sirius XM, Channel 73, Monday through Friday from 4 in the afternoon until 9 o'clock. And I've been there for five years, and I'm having a great time. And I have a studio in my home, and it's not an office. It's not a bedroom. It's a studio. It's a studio studio. Yes, yes, with double uh, walls. Hey, how many international listeners do you get on XM Radio? I've got, I'll tell you right now, uh, it's, it's hard to count, but I have a lot of Canadian listeners. Huh. I have a lot of people in Canada. And it's since we have the uh, SX, you know, you can get the Sirius XM on your phone. It's called the SXM app. Uh -huh. Right. And if you have it on your phone, I've had people go on vacation in Europe and listen mm -hmm. to me in Europe really? and Hawaii. Yeah, you can listen all over the world if you have the app. But but uh, he if, has an iPhone. Do, does your phone? Can you show us your I, phone? I, I, yeah. Where's your it. phone? Can you I unfold it? it? No, you're going to embarrass your dad. <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> I've got a. Flip That's an phone. iPhone. Yeah. See, he <laughs> actually does a podcast, but he's never. He can't listen to one. Because it's too complicated. Hey, did I did I did, <laughs> I, did, I, did I show you this one? That I hey Reagan is, didn't uh, have an iPhone right. either. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. This is where when I shook hands <laughs> with the giver, right there, and that that isn't that a great shot? That is a great shot. Now the only yeah. problem with this shot, if you look real close, you see I'm standing in front of your dad, and that's rude. I'm so no, sorry. No, no, you, you can barely see him. <laughs> no, no, no. That's why it's hey, his favorite. I recovered after you knocked me out of the way. I mean, oh. it, was, it was it worked out. Well. I you know something. The reason the president spent so much time with you is because he liked you. Well, and, I, he was, and he was having a great time. Well, he was having a great time. And by the way, I would like to present to you oh my the gosh. picture of me and Ronald Reagan. And, there Sign, it is. and really signed by and Ronald yeah, Reagan. Signed by Ronald Reagan. That is Courtesy great. of his son, Michael hey, Reagan. Shotgun Tom, thank you. And you nice? know, I've That's got cool. a picture of you with Reagan when you were this, this big, right? I and you remember. got a picture right. of your dad and Reagan also. Yeah, and a picture of my dad and That's Reagan. That's right. Yeah. Now, now, do you yeah. have an I Love Me room? No. Oh, I do. Yes. <laughs> no, All of those elk in the other room. See, I have an I Love I've Me room. I've got a bunch of stuffed animals in this one, but they're only sleeping. Oh, right? I see. Yeah, yeah right, but, uh, right, right, right. Yeah. 
So anyway, uh, you know, uh, Duncan, you... No, but this is going on our mantle right in, in the elk room, in the Great. trophy room, because this is a real trophy. Duncan, yeah. you have been so kind to me over the years, uh, since we first met reading those books to those kids. Hey. Uh, and, and you're a real humanitarian man. Well, you're, hey, listen, you're very kind, uh, Shotgun. I, I just want part of the franchise. Is that right? Yeah, you, you got it. You got it. <laughs> now, is there anything else you want to know? Hey. I mean, since... Well, uh, well, listen, so your dad, when did you move to San Diego? So your dad was a railroad guy in from, San Diego? In, no, no, in Nebraska. In Nebraska. He's, uh, as a matter of fact, he had to get a job on the railroad because his father had, had died. And so he had to support his sisters. So he got a job in Nebraska on the CB&Q. And this is the days when they had shoveling coal. He was a kid just shoveling coal in there. Destroying the climate. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. That's right. That's what he was doing. But anyway, uh, my dad, that's when his, he started the railroad career. So how did, how did you get to San Diego? Okay. Well, both my brothers, I had two brothers. My, uh, my brother Greg and my brother Bob, who both were in the uh, Army. I didn't quite make it because I had a uh, serious problem with my nose. <laughs> I, I don't know. But anyway, I did take the, I went down and, and, and took the physical and all that stuff, but I didn't pass. So uh, but both my brothers are veterans. Uh, and uh, I tried to be one, but anyway, I got into broadcasting. Maybe it was, is better for it. But anyway, uh, my dad uh, decided that Nebraska was kind of cold. So he moved his two kids and my mother, LaVon Irwin, out to San Diego because he'd heard that Santa Fe was hiring engineers. And he was an engineer on the CB&Q. And so uh, uh, he came down here. And of course, uh, railroad, you have to have a seniority. So before he got some seniority and he can hire on, and they hire, hire Santa Fe hired everybody in San Bernardino. That was their, their main office. So, so this is crazy, though. Let me interrupt. People moved to California from other states. Yeah, isn't that amazing? For work? Isn't that amazing? Wow. Okay, you're blowing my mind. <laughs> I know. Okay, keep going. This so anyway, uh, my dad had to wait a while uh, so he can get some seniority. And so you know what he did? My dad was uh, uh, also a farmer. Uh, they raised chickens. They raised cows. Uh, they uh, chick uh, the whole the whole deal, pigs and all that stuff. And so he knew animals. So uh, while he was uh, waiting to get on the Santa Fe here in San Diego, uh, are you ready for this? They raised Pomeranian dogs and oh. sold them. And you know how wow. expensive those little dogs are. No. Even to, oh, they are. And right. even back in, 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 in the 40s, wow. they were very expensive. But a little Pomeranian dog, you go for like a couple of thousand dollars now, where back then it'd probably go for a couple a hundred thousand. bucks still. No, no, maybe uh, maybe six hundred or something like wow, that. Wow, that's and awesome. that's a lot of money in the forties. <laughs> so anyway, my dad uh, made money for our family by selling those dogs, and then of course he got on. Uh, on you know the something that shows the kind of the genius of freedom, of free enterprise. That's right. Yeah. People find niches, don't they? Yes. Uh, the idea that you raising dogs. Now, my dad, back in the 30s, as a kid, raised Cocker Spaniels and sold them to the officers at March Air Base because Cocker go. Spaniels were very popular. Sure. But you find, you know, if you got a state, if you got a communist government or a socialist government telling you what you're going to do, mm -hmm. they can never be as smart as people themselves, mm -hmm. as the people who have this genius for finding a niche and, and following that niche. Or Fulfilling that someone's need for something. That's yeah. right. Dogs yeah. or whatever. That, that's a, that is a great story. It is. Raising it is. Pomeranian dogs. It, yeah, to, it yeah. Keep, his, keep food on the table for the family. Yeah. You know? And then, of course, I came along. Uh, he called me the caboose. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I came along in 1948. Uh, August uh, That's great. 8, 8, same year I came along. Yeah, both the same year. Yeah, yeah August, same when's your birthday, Duncan? Yeah, May 31st. Oh, is that? Well, I'm, uh, I'm uh, August 8th. Yeah. yeah wow. Happy birthday. Yeah, well, wow. Thank you. Wow. Let's put another candle on my birthday cake, baby. <laughs> you know. So anyway. Oh, and I, you, a lot of people, when I'm in parades and stuff like that, uh, a lot of people want me to do the shotgun tom sound, which is, <laughs> you better believe it, baby. I did that as just a <laughs> shtick. <laughs> You know, and every time somebody sees me in a restaurant, 
Hey, shotgun. <laughs> they can't do it, you know. Uh, right you now, really got to get your lips in, too, it looks like. Yeah. yeah. Your lips are vibrating you know, like a yeah. butterfly's wings. They do, yeah. They, they really do. That. Yeah. That's In fact, amazing. I noticed that. I'm uh, glad you didn't do that with Reagan. <laughs> no, no, I didn't do that. No. <laughs> you know, but as you know, I worked at KCBQ. Although he would have enjoyed it. He probably would have. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, I worked at uh, KCBQ. A lot of people remember KCBQ is where I worked because I worked there for a long time. I worked all the radio stations, KCBQ, KFMB, Kogo, KGB. I mean, you know, it's, a, it's, it's surprising that they single out KCBQ, but they do. Now, remember, uh, Mr. Bartell, Lee Bartell, who owned KCBQ, wanted to go 50,000 watts. And his, his, his transmitter was by the uh, campus drive-in. But to go 50,000 watts, you've got to move out to nowhere where nobody is. And that's what Santee was back in those days. What, so you don't give them Nin cancer or something? No, no, 1957, there were no houses out there. There were just cows out in Santee. So that's where he built his 50,000 watt transmitter. And if you remember those towers, those towers went, I mean, six of them. The directional tower, that, that signal was directional straight out to the Pacific Ocean. That's why a lot of the Navy guys used to listen to KCBQ you know, on the ship out there. Also, if you want to see me get this star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame, you can also go to YouTube and uh, go Shotgun Tom Hollywood. And you'll see a picture of me and Stevie Wonder. Stevie Wonder yeah, was yeah. my speaker when I got my star on the Hollywood Walk That's of right. Fame. That's great. Why? And what? Why? Because I've known him so many years. Really? Yeah, okay. yeah. And I wanted Stevie to be my speaker. And... Uh, that's cool. He uh, called me one night wow. and, and I asked him, I said, yeah, you come on out. So anyway, his brother Milton is just wonderful. I mean, it's a, it's a great, it's a great family. As a matter of fact, I told Stevie Wonder, I said, Stevie, uh, you know, when my daughter Melanie was born, uh, I played, uh, isn't she lovely, your song to celebrate her birth. She's graduating from San Diego State University in the nursing department. If, if you could just do a little, you know, salute to her on audio. So that's what m m uh, his brother Milton Hardaway, they went to Stevie's studio and they did this beautiful, beautiful thing. I had my daughter up on stage uh, with her n nurse's pin and uh, I said, ladies and gentlemen, you know, when my daughter was born, I played Stevie Wonder's Isn't She Lovely and to celebrate her birth. Now she's graduating from San Diego State as a nurse, BSN, RN, I think it'd be only apropos. We play Stevie Wonders, Isn't She Lovely? I cue the audio guy. <laughs> Out of the speakers comes Stevie's voice. Hi, Melanie, this is Stevie. On behalf of your father, I want to congratulate you from graduating from the San Diego State School of Nursing. What can I tell you? One, two, isn't she lovely? Isn't it one? And there were so many tears. That is great. At, that, at Bocce's restaurant is where, where it was. And... Uh, it was just a wonderful, and I went back to Stevie and I said, Stevie, that was so wonderful that you did that for my daughter. And I, and I really liked the fact when you said, three, two, one, you spliced your voice in there. And he said, I didn't splice it in there, I sang it. <laughs> but anyway, you can see the, uh, the star thing on YouTube, just uh, shotgun Tom great. Kelly. If you click on the picture of me and Stevie Wonder and, and you can see what a great guy he is. This, yeah. this is a great picture. It is. It's this is good. a great picture. Yeah, yeah. You seem to show up in great pictures. Well, Tom. I try. My, <laughs> yeah. my wife, my wife Linda, said that I'm somewhat photogenic. You know, <laughs> but I got to tell you, you, gotta, you I, really I, haven't changed from this picture. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, no, that's everybody right. says that. You know, yeah, I mean, <laughs> there we you go. really haven't changed. Uh, but you know, uh, that's uh, incredible. I got, I got to take my hat off. I'm going to take it off here, but I got to take my hat off to uh, Mike McKinnon. Because when he started the KUSI Kids Club, you know, I'd, I'd done uh, six years over at Channel 10, and then he hired me on as the announcer at KUSI way before they had news. They didn't have any news. So uh, I was the only personality on there. He said, I want to start the KUSI Kids Club. He did that show over at uh, Channel 10. I said, yeah. He said, I got a cartoon package, and uh, I want to start that. And I did that show morning and afternoon for 12 years. And wow. I get people like you, Duncan, yeah. coming up to me and saying, you know, when I was a little kid, I used to watch you and I used to come home from school when I was in fourth grade, you know. So uh, I still love that. It doesn't make me feel old. It makes me feel good. Good. There it and is. I love I, San Diego. I was born here. Yeah. Yeah. San Diego's a great town, man. It is great. And always will be. Yeah. I'm not going to leave. 
No, nor I'm going to stick it out here. I, I, I mean, I left to, I as left long as home. I can be homeless or something on the street and have them not make me move. You yeah. know, I left for 20 years. <laughs> I left for 20 years to go to Hollywood, and uh, I'm, I'm glad I did to go mm. to K Earth 101. You got to realize K Earth is owned by CBS Radio at the time, and uh, it's a very well respected radio station. For I mean, they had uh, the morning guy was Robert W. Morgan. Uh, I, I, I succeeded the real Don Steele when he passed away. That's how I got the job in 1997, is uh, Don was one of my radio heroes. And he passed away, and I got his job, and I was there for 20 years. Another friend of mine uh, was Wolfman Jack. Me and Wolf were very, very close, and we had some wonderful times together. What a unique guy he I was. I remember Wolfman Jack, too. Yeah. I remember well, he the was... The only uh, guy that had a voice that could rival yours. Well, no, he... Radio he was, voice. He was something else, and... Uh, uh, you know, when he talked to you, he talked to you like this. He kind of whispered a little bit, man. And so I, I played a trick on him. He was on the Roger Hedgecock show. And uh, when I was a kid, I was a big fan of his. When I was a kid doing DXing, I used to DX these faraway radio stations. And there was one broadcasting from Del Rio, Texas. X-E-R-F broadcasted over the tubes from Del Rio, Texas. Have mercy, this is Wolfman Jack. And I want you to buy the Wolfman Jack record album on the Bread Record label. Send $3 cash check or money order for the Wolfman Jack record album. I sent away for that, baby. I had to, I had to mow three lawns. I got a dollar a lawn, you know? And I, and I still have it to this day. So he was on the Roger Hitchcock show, right? So I know Roger's producer. And I said, hey, why don't you go ahead and, uh, you know, set up the 10 second delay with this Wolfman Jack song. Now that's him singing songs. Let me tell you about oop, 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 a do, you know? That. And uh, he thought he did a terrible job because that's when he was first starting out. So anyway, uh, I'm listening to Roger. Well, we have Wolfman Jack on the show, very special guest. Wolfman, welcome to the Roger Hedgecock Show. And he goes, oh my God, don't ever play that again. That's terrible. <laughs> that's absent. Oh, that's awful. Oh, wait a minute. Where'd you get that? Oh, I know where you got it. I'm going to kill him. <laughs> and then he, then he came out. He's talking about you. Yeah, yeah. he's talking about me. Yeah, you knew I sabotaged him. So anyway, then he came out to KCBQ, did a show with me. And then I remember he said, Shotgun, that's not funny, man. That's when I was first starting out, man. I, I was terrible, man. It was awful. Don't do that again, you know. Do you remember the television show, America's Most Wanted? Yeah. Yeah. I was the voice of that show. To date, wow. you have been responsible for 951 captures. That's great. This is America's Most Wanted with host John Walsh. Now, let's join the manhunt. Here's John Walsh. I'll now, be darned. And that's shotgun. <laughs> no, no. You know, that we, I was in a studio <laughs> in Hollywood. I was being directed from Washington, D.C. You know, if you're a fugitive, you say, I'm going to give up because that shotgun guy that's right, said that's he's right. coming after me. <laughs> Another show that I did uh, was on the uh, Spike Television Network. And it was kind of a weird little show. Uh, it's called A Thousand Ways to Die. And I can remember one of the things, I, d I did that. I've watched that. Yeah, a yeah, a, a lot of, a lot of people your age, that is the show they watched. Because it was very unique. Meet Chester and Lester, two drug addict speed freaks just looking to get high. So they decided to rob a small time magician who was looking for his killer act. They stole some white powder. They snorted it, but they didn't realize it was G4. It gelled in their sinuses, and they suffocated to death on a thousand ways to die. Perfect. Yeah, that's, that's a scary <laughs> that's one. That's great. Uh, and my, uh, of course, I'm, I met Elton John. Is that a true story? That is a true so story. They snorted what they thought was cocaine. Some, and yeah, it was, uh, you know, that magic. It gelled up in their sinuses. Well, that, you know, mag magicians use this uh, 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 powder okay. when they go da 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 it has a glass of water da 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 and they turn it over and the water ain't coming out because it's already oh it's gel yes yeah, gel you just ruined it for me I'm sorry I didn't know that okay yes. now we know how well, they keep how they them coming out that's how they die Penn and Teller okay we're going on the show so anyway I've uh, <laughs> I met uh, of course Stevie Wonder I would have would have not have met him I've known Johnny Mathis for years he has a beautiful Steinway piano and my daughter's a wonderful pianist and I said, hey, Melanie, you want to sit down and uh, play, play the piano? I can't do that, Daddy, without asking permission. And Johnny was in the other room. He heard it. He says, oh, uh, does anybody here know how to play the piano? <laughs> and so she sat down. They had a great time. Great. Uh, I, uh, I also met uh, Clint Eastwood uh, in, uh, in Herb Alpert's club uh, called uh, Vibratos in Beverly Hills. He was, he was at a table. 
And I said, do I dare go over to his table? You know, you don't want to bother these Hollywood people. But I went over to him and I, I said, Mr. Eastwood, I'm Shotgun Tom Kelly from K Earth 101. He says, I know who you are. And he had uh, uh, Tom Greason, who is uh, Frank Sinatra's uh, comic. He said, I know who you are too. So you, know, you don't want to talk about movies to a man. You want to talk about what he's interested in. He was interested in jazz music. So we talked about Chuck Niles, the famous jazz disc jockey in, in Los Angeles. And we just had a marvelous time. Now, this is the part I left out of the conversation when I tell this. And my agent says, no, you've got to include this. It's like your Duncan Hunter story where you tore your pants open. You've got to include this. So he had a kind of a half a drink of water there. And I talk with my hands, as you know. And so I hit his water and it fell over and he goes, well, I'm not riding shotgun with you. you know. <laughs> uh, and uh, who else? Uh, God, there's been, th that's just a few. Uh, of course, I know Herb Alpert and his son and the, he owns that club. Oh, uh, uh, Jay Leno. Jay and I, uh, of course, Jay's into cars and we worked the uh, LAPD uh, car show together. And I did that every year and we just had a marvelous time. Um, and as a matter of fact, my daughter Melanie and I went to see The Tonight Show when he was the host. And uh, he couldn't have been nice. It was, in fact, it was on my birthday. And so he says, anybody celebrating a birthday? So we actually went down there on stage as he was opening, you know, warming up the show. And uh, just to, uh, he, he took pictures with us. I mean, couldn't be a, gr a nicer guy than Jay Leno. Uh, but you want to talk about, uh, you don't want to talk about TV with him, like in the car shows. We talked about cars, right? Because if you talk about TV, you know it's like deer in the head. I hated talking politics. Yeah, right. I mean, it, even it, though I talked it all the time, exactly. But I mean, that's what people expect you to talk it. So it's your job yeah. to talk it, right? Right. But we got the great Michael J. Smith, who's our uh, who's oh, our he's fantastic camera guy and producer. He, he's a great cinematographer, and of course, uh, he did a story with uh, Dave Scott's World of Wonder, and he came out to my house, and between him and Dave. They put together this wonderful story for KUSI, which includes my dad, includes the Stevie Wonder story. And if you want to see it, all you got to do is go to uh, on YouTube, Shotgun Tom, HO Trains, Dave Scott's World of Wonder. And it'll be right there. Wow. And, and you've got a big... That, that's, that's our great cinematographer, Michael Smith. You have a train yeah. set in your house? It's sitting on my pool table. Now, if we want to play pool, all I got to do is press one button and the Klusners from Lloyd's Layouts, they built a hoist. I press one button and it goes Bzzz. and then the pool lights are under the layout and we play pool. And I understand your dad likes to play pool. Yeah. You yeah, like to play about, pool? Yeah, but I'm not very good. Long well, time. who is? Yeah. It's yeah. A, you know, yeah, a friend of mine said, pool is a game of good intentions. Yeah. Hey, hey, <laughs> incidentally. He plays uh, golf, a lot of golf. Oh, you know, you know what pool is? Oh, you know what golf is? Barnyard pool. Go ahead, Doug. Yeah. That's exactly right. <laughs> That's right. Dave Scott? Yes, great guy. Yeah, yeah. One of the greatest golfers in San Diego County. I played one celebrity golf game with him. The rest of us didn't have to play. He hit the ball 300 yards. He hit the ball as far as you do. Tremendous player. Wow. Yeah, he, he could be on the pro tour. You've probably, you probably know about this. You know who else is a tremendous player? Has had several holes in one? No. Johnny Mathis. Really? Yes. Really? Didn't know it. Oh, God, he's, that's his game. That's his game. Oh, and he said, you know, I've played with six different presidents. Hmm. Wow. Yeah. That's cool. Wow. That's cool. And, well, he's a great guy. And, and your daughter played his piano. That is true. She did. She did. And you know, uh, Michael J. Smith over here, we had a, a Christmas card of my daughter playing the piano. And uh, uh, my wife, Linda, my son, Nick. Uh, and my daughter Melanie on the piano, and I'm over. And so we uh, we played uh, the uh, who's uh, the the Peanuts song uh, by Vince Guaraldi. You know, I can't remember the title. But anyway, Michael went ahead and did the uh, Christmas card. He took the still picture, and then with the QR code, if you click on it, then we come alive. Wow! And that that a great Christmas wow. card. Yeah. Wow. You're going to write a book. I oh yes, I am. I'm, I almost forgot about that. And I'm almost ready. I think the book might be ready 
by Christmas, at least I'm hoping. What do you mean the book might be ready? Is it, is it getting changed? No, it, I've, on I've got four <laughs> editors. <laughs> oh, you wow. got it. Yeah, I got four editors working on it. Neil Ross is uh, the guy I wrote it with. He uh, does a lot of cartoon voices, uh, and uh, he uh, he's he's the uh, one of his voices is shipwreck on uh, GI Joe mm -hmm. the video game, but uh, he's an author himself, so he's been a great help to me. Right. And then I've got uh, T. K. Arnold, who wrote, wrote for the Los Angeles Times. He's given a, a good hard read. I've got a lot of people who are helping me with the book and the book. It's called, All I Want to Do is Play the Hits. And the <laughs> All reason I want to do is play the yeah, hits. I'll, I'll briefly tell you this, how that came up. I went to, you know, I'm Catholic. I went to a St. John of the Cross Catholic School out in Lemon Grove. And Sister Mario came up to me and she said, Thomas, get over here. So I said, yes, sister, what's up? And I was about 12 years old, something like that. She says, Thomas, you have to learn to spell. You have to learn to read. You have to learn to write a sentence and use it in a paragraph. And I, I knew I wanted to be in broadcasting since I was 10 years old. That's what it says in this newspaper article. Hang on. In this newspaper article right here. Above the fold, and I talk about you, Duncan. I like that. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah. So anyway. Uh, that's one of the few positive things about me that's ever appeared oh. in the UT. Oh, well. Anyway. God bless them. Yeah. So anyway, the Sister Mario came and said that to me. And... Uh, I knew since I was 10, 10 years old that I wanted to be in broadcasting. And so I looked at her and I go, let me tell you something, sister. All I want to do is play the hits. Oh, she got very upset. <laughs> so that's the title of my book. All I want to do is play the hits. And that's going to be the cover. That is great. Yeah. That is great. So, hey, so we look forward to that. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and we want to help you have some book signings. We oh, I'd love be that. Adam. Oh, I'd love that. Yeah. Because you are going to be signing a lot of books. I hope so. I hope yeah. I'm going to be selling a lot of books. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and thank you, Duncan, for bringing that up. Absolutely. That's what I'm here for. You when, are. When two old guys get together and talk, I just remind I you of things. I would have forgotten about that. Right. <laughs> well, it's been good to be here on Dinosaur Night, Duncan. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, from producer Mike and the uh, two Duncan Hunters. Yes. Thank you very much, Shotgun Tom Kelly. That has Kelly. been great. Thank you for having me. And Shotgun Tom, we're not finished with you. We're going to see you a lot more. And San Diego is going to see you a lot more. And hear you a lot more with that inimitable voice oh, thank that you. everybody knows. Thank you very much. It's been a great pleasure for me being here on hey. the Duncan and Duncan. Hey, and we want to see <laughs> so, your book. Oh, yeah. The book yeah. is coming out. Yeah, We'll okay. have you back on the podcast when oh, the book yeah, comes out. That'd book, be a yeah. great time to talk about it again. That'd be great. And to hear some more stories. So in the meantime, I'm Duncan Hunter. And I'm Duncan Hunter. And this is the Duncan Hunter Show. Stay tuned for more.